Hello, and welcome back to Polytoots. So in today's lesson, we are going to be covering the third and final example of the vertex deformation stuff, which is that rug over on the right. So if you haven't seen the previous tutorials, we just covered the, uh, the pipe bulge type thing, which is, you know, something moving throughout a mesh. And then we did the flower growing example, so how you can make things kind of seem as though they are growing from nothing. And so today we will be doing the rug deforming. And, you know, if you can imagine this just being upside down, then obviously you would have a ball that's creating like holes in a mesh rather than it creating like little um, mountains. Not really a mountain, a dimple, an extrusion, a bumpy wumpy. You know what I mean. The point I'm trying to make is this has other uses. You don't need much to get started with this tutorial, but if you did want this exact same mesh, which is just a subdivided plane and the texture, you can hop along to my Patreon where it will be freely available for a download along with the shader nodes. Not that you'll need them, it's not too, too complex. I shouldn't say that. No, no, you should go over to my, to my Patreon. Oh, well. Hello, me again. Uh, slight interjection here because the audio was recorded before I've changed things around, but on my Patreon, I'm now releasing all of the source files available to the public. Um, not of all of the previous stuff, but from now on, Moving forward, source files will be available at least for the vast majority of tutorials that we do. So just mentioning that there. And I think later on in the video, like toward the end, I mentioned it again. So um, yeah, that's incorrect information. So it's just source files available. Everybody's happy. So just to quickly show you what the setup here is, as I did say, it is just a subdivided plane, but also the UVs pretty default. You know, we're just going in that zero to one range. You know, it's just a, just a square. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a bit of padding or if there's some things, you know, that are slightly um, drawn in from the edges. Just make sure you're not outside the zero to one space. But for the most part, so long as it's kind of set up like this, like a top projection of your actual mesh, then you should be all good. Okie dokie. So straight back to Unity and let's create ourselves a new Amplify Surface shader. And as usual, just call it what you want and open it up. Oh, and also just as a reminder up here in the general tab, where you have the shader name, this actually specifies the material directory, or I suppose shader directory. You know when you create a material within Unity and you can change it from like a standard to a particle or whatever you want? This is that, essentially. So I'm creating mine in a polytoots directory and then giving it a name. So it's just a good way to keep things all neat and tidy. So to start with, I'm just going to put down a texture node with the T key, holding it and then clicking. And I'll just call this main text, which is a good name to give things because then if you're swapping between materials like the default Unity ones, uh, main text is the default name essentially that it uses for the albedo. So, uh, you know, it makes things kind of compatible with other materials if you're swapping between them. That's another little handy tip there, just thrown in for free. But anyway, the point of this is I'm just going to save this now, close it down because we don't yet have a material created from this. So there's nothing actually on our rug that we're using. So I'm just going to right click on our shader that we've made and create a material from it. This will automatically assign it the correct shader. Uh, and then I'll just put it on our rug and then throw the texture on and now we're good to go. But we're not gonna go back into the shader just yet. Uh, instead, what we're actually gonna do is create a camera. And we want this camera to be looking straight down at our mesh. So the easiest way to do that is to actually just put the camera as a child of our mesh, just by dragging it inside, zeroing out the transforms. And now you can just rotate it by 90 and lift it up. We also want this to be a orthographic camera because we don't need any perspective. And with orthographic cameras, you can change the zoom level, I suppose, just with the size. We'll tweak this later if we need to, but it kind of looks like five is actually the right amount for what we need. But if yours is slightly different, the point here is just to encompass your mesh as closely as possible. So you don't want any of your mesh being outside of this camera, but you also don't want it to be, you know, too far inside. You'll also want to set the clear flags to be a solid color and change the background color to a black. This won't make any difference now because we're still looking at the skybox through the camera, but we can change that. And the way that we change that is with the culling mask. So at the moment it's set to everything, meaning we can see everything. We only want this to actually be looking at one thing and we will create our own layer to do that. As you can see, I've already got a layer here called Deformer. But if you don't know how to make your own layers, it's basically up here in the top right area of the inspector where it says Layer Default. There's a drop down here. You can click on that and just add a new layer. You can see there's a whole list of things here and I have mine already specified in number nine, but you can create a layer and call it, you know, whatever you want. And now that will be a layer that you can choose in, you know, various drop downs and things, which we want to do for our culling mask. 
So after you've made your layer, simply go into the camera and it's easier just to set the culling mask to nothing first, that way it unchecks everything, and then select the layer that you actually want. And we only want the deformer for this one. And now just as a quick example, I'm going to just throw a sphere in the scene and we will put this in the layer deformer so the camera can only see this sphere. I think you might know where we're going with this. So as you can see, if I move the sphere, check the camera again, we can see the sphere has moved. So we know that everything is fine and dandy. So now we need a render texture. And the way that we make those is if you go to the create panel inside the project view, it'll just be there as a custom render texture. So create one, give it some sort of sensible name or not sensible. I don't know. I'm not your dad. I would also just take a moment to check the resolution settings. I'm going to keep this pretty low res. It doesn't have to be high res, even if you're mapping, you know, like an entire level. It's basically just, you know, height information. It's just, you know, black and white color. So as I say, even if you're doing a massive level, you typically don't need this to be very high. All right, so now actually back to the shader. We're going to create another texture node, just holding down the T key and clicking. We'll just call this render texture. And just as a quick test, we'll throw this in the emission, save the shader, and then we can go and have a look at what's happening here. And of course, don't forget to actually apply the render texture to your material. As you can see, it is projecting the texture that we see from the camera, but our rotation is uh, you know, not correct. This is an easy fix though. Just grab the camera and uh, rotate it until, until everything is correct, basically. And now you'll see when we move the sphere around, the texture underneath, which is applied to our rug, is matching one to one. It is worth noting that obviously moving the sphere up and down isn't going to have any effect on this whatsoever because this is an orthographic projection and we're looking at the sphere. So it doesn't matter how far up or down the sphere is, we can't see anything else through that camera. So even if it was under the mesh, the camera can only see that sphere. So yeah, that will have no effect. So now to finish off the shader, we are going to multiply our render texture with a float. And we'll call this one bump power or something. It will, you know, indicate the uh, the actual power of our texture. And then we'll multiply this again just with a vertex normal. And that can go straight into your local vertex offset. And that is it. Like that is the shader done. As far as the tutorial goes, at least. I'm sure there's still plenty of things we could do. But for now, that is it. You're probably just looking at the timeline now and wondering why is there still so much more of this tutorial left over. It's because we're not quite finished. And you'll see why. See? Have a look at that. That is just nasty. Like, it is doing the job that we want, but this is a very uh, harsh deformation. And I don't know, maybe there's a way to do it in the shader where you can take, you know, just like the R channel or something of this result and try to soften it out a bit. But I imagine this would require like multiple passes. You've got to offset it a bit and then reduce their power. Seems like a bit of a waste to me. So the way that we're actually going to tackle this problem is we're not going to use the mesh itself as the deformer. So I've been lying to you this whole time. We're actually going to just use a particle system. So we want to grab our sphere and take it out of the deformer layer and just put it back into the default layer. And now we'll right click on it and we'll create ourselves a particle system. So that way the particle system is created as a child of the sphere. And then we'll change the duration to one second, lifetime to one second, and the start speed to zero, just so it stops, you know, pushing out. Uh, we don't need any shape because we don't want it to be, you know, spawning in a shape. We just want it to spawn in a point. And then lastly, I'll just change the emission to some sort of low number. We can change this later, but you know, one, two, three, you know, something low. We do want to add this to the deformer layer. So now you can see that this particle is actually creating the deformations and so now we can come along and we can start to put in some some tweaks you can mess with the material on the rug try to increase the power of it but for now we'll just focus on the particle so increase the size and you might notice in some situations that unity won't let you create a particle larger than um than than what you can what am i trying to say unity won't let you make a particle any bigger and it's kind of based on like the camera distance but if you go down into the renderer tab in the particle system you can change the maximum size so that way you can actually have a particle be uh, larger like if you need it to be bigger so you should be able to tell already that just by messing about with the particle a bit we are getting this softer transition and it is just a mix between the start size, the emission amount, and the power on the shader itself. If you remember, we had that bump power property. 
these are pretty much the only things you need to try and tweak to make like a nice deform amount. And so now you can, you know, zero out the transforms on that particle and then just make some minor little tweaks just to uh, make sure it's not clipping through, you know? And so now you can see if you move it around, it's deforming nicely. We do, of course, have this issue where we are looking at the particle. Uh, now in the game view, that's fine because we can use a camera to just not see the particle. But if you don't want to see it in the scene view, there is actually just a little drop down up here. You can just uncheck particle systems. If you have a particle system selected, you can actually still see it. If you click off of it then the particle is still there but we can't see it but because it's there our camera can see it and it's you know working its magic on our texture now of course we can still see the particle in our game view so the way to fix that is if you go to your main camera probably by default it will be set to like the call mask will be set to everything so just make sure that the deformer is turned off in your main camera and now the main camera in your game cannot see that particle system so just to be clear, it's not that we've just told your main camera to ignore all particle systems, just, it's, in fact, it's not even particle systems. We've just told the main camera to ignore anything that we put in the deformer layer, and it just so happens the only thing in our deformer layer is a particle system. So I, I just, I just want to make that clear because I can imagine already, like I'm thinking into the future and there's going to be some comments, so hopefully that's all cleared up. And so that is pretty much it for the tutorial. Uh, you can, you know, obviously rename your cameras and things. Uh, there is a good reason why you might want your camera to be a child of the mesh that you're trying to deform and that's so you can actually move the mesh like somewhere else and the effect will just work like as is because think of your camera as just like a texture projection so you want that to always be in line. Um, it's just another little little tip for you there. But yeah that is that is it. As I mentioned I think in the beginning the uh, the mesh and texture and shader node for this will be available free on my Patreon. Oh, and also one last thing, uh, if you did want to have this two-sided, at least within Amplify, you can just go into the shader itself and change the, uh, the culling mode of the mesh over here. So now, you know, if you see under the mesh, it's, uh, it's doing you know, that on the other side. But yeah, that will do it for now. We may cover some more Vertex deformation stuff in the future, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the next few weeks holds. So again, I thank you very much for watching and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one.